Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dooler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com and now here's crappie hippie at the bench okay so um one way to do this is to take we're gonna t -t 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 take take another 16th ounce this one i have a nice must add skipjack number four sickle hook in here we're gonna take this 16th ounce and we're going to make us a thread bed make a good one okay boom 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 all right there we go yes. take that off and now I'm going to take all right and I'm just going to lay it on the hook like this and it's not going to have a whole lot of tail sticking off here okay so I can just take this down here and then pull straight down and then I'm just going to come in here about that far okay I'm not going to make this a wildly huge bugger jig but he's going to have this kind of active kicky tail okay and I'm gonna, now I'm going to stop and I want my thread back here right back here Alrighty, now we're talking. Here's another type of hackle. These are uh, generally off a of rooster. These are your five to seven inch big saddle hackles. This is off the tail region. I'm back there, over the you know, and they're nice and long. Now what I do with these, and the, and the great thing is I've got almost no web up in here, so they're really stiff, and then they get softer as they come down in here. Now I take these. I want this tip up here for making crappie tail so. I'm taking that off. I'm taking that off. I'm taking that off. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that piece. Okay, that's the beauty of tying. You know, when you don't have to use this whole hackle. Now this piece at the back. We'll talk about palmering. We'll talk about dubbing. We'll talk about all kinds of stuff. But once again, in your scrap bag, it can be used. And then if you get tired of looking at it, you can always give it away to somebody. Okay, and now we're going to put this big long hackle on here. And the main thing is to get enough hackle laid down on here, you know. And some guys strip the strip this feather stuff off before they go to do this. I don't. I figure the more stuff in there to hold that down, the better. And then I've got it in there. And I'm trying to use scissors instead of hackle pliers. So we just come in here and we do this and we do this and we do this and we just keep going and we just keep going and we just go until we get here and then and it's easiest when you have it end up right here in front of you this is where you want it always give yourself some room at the end to finish your tie you know, don't get so material freaky and material conscious that, okay, that you uh, don't give yourself room to work. Okay, and that is about that. I'm just going to take, sweep this back just a little bit, a little bit in there. Okay, and then I'm going to finish it. Two, three, four, five, and one two three okay and then i'm gonna i'm gonna wiggle that thread clear down in there and then i'm going to cut it long dope it up and i you know you're like why didn't you put it on the thread well because i didn't think of it <laughs> finishing it the way i used to 
I don't know why. It's a lot easier to put the put the stuff on the thread and then wrap it in on this particular fly or jig. But this works. That works. You keep your toothpicks and keep track of your toothpicks. You ever pulled a toothpick out of somebody's foot, had one in your own foot, or had to listen to someone tell a story almost every time you get together about how they got a toothpick in their foot, uh, you know, you'll know that it, it's well worth keeping them uh, picked up. Okay, so looky here. We got this kind of skinny body, kind of really buggy, uh, trouty. Uh, panfish, bluegill, you know, is what I'm going to go for with this. Shell crackers, something that's eating bluegill. Um, got that look, all right? Now, we go ahead and do a different look. We're going to do crappie style. And we're going to put a bugger body on a crappie style one. And what we're going to do there is... Hang some of these guys up out of the way. Sorry for bumping the camera all the time. Here we go. Now I got a little blue in here because I made this up. This is on an old Mazuo jig hook, which you can't. There, you can still find them if you look hard enough. But Mazuo America closed down a while back, and hook guys are getting rid of all their Mazuo stocks. Um, so if you really like these really light wire Mazuo hooks. Uh, you better get busy and find them because they're they're going away. But there you go. Okay, so we start with our usual thread bed. And now I've got to decide on a tail. And I've got two choices here because I want to put a blue tail on here. Kind of go with the blue sparkle I put up here. And I got this mitt, or sponge actually. Uh, this is a more expensive, yeah, because I only get the one side and all that. Although the sponge is still usable. It's fine to use after we're done. Uh, what really drew me to this one, too, is that it has two sizes. So it's got a big fat blue on there, and then it's got some skinny, smaller uh, blue on there. And I'm, gonna, I'm trying to find one of the smaller ones that's just not, or one of the bigger ones that's kind of small, or one of the smaller ones that's not too big. And... Uh, I mean, one of the smaller ones is not too small, or one of the bigger ones is not too big. That's how I need to say it. All right, let's get everybody out of the way, and there we go. All right. Get okay, so now I'm going to take some of this material off. That one came out kind of kooky. I and pulled clear out of there. Gave me a lot of material. More material than I needed. Cut that down just a little bit. Cut it a little flush. Look, that's how much I want sticking off. All right. And I'm going to come straight down here. I'm going to hold it. it. Tried to roll on me. I'm going to reposition it. I'm going to hold it where it needs to be. And then I'm going to get it where it needs to be. And then I'm coming in. And I'm coming in tight. Okay. Coming in tight. All right. So now. What do we have to do, right? We've got to, uh, we've got to uh, um, tie in a hackle back here, right, boys and girls? We don't, you know, that's that thinking ahead that fly tying makes you do. And uh, now I got lucky here. If you go to, a, you know, got the money and you want to buy a ton of stuff, you can go to these. Most feather places sell to fly tying people, and but they they make a whole lot of money. Probably most of their money selling for. Uh, fashion studios and costumes and stuff and my wife worked in a, a studio for a while and and a photography studio and they're always dressing the little kids up in different ways and they had lots and lots of feather boas now most of them were junk but they had some that were really good like this one's almost all made out of all this beautiful blue uh light blue saddle hackle and uh i got it you know when she sold all her studio stuff i got a giant piece of this for you know, like five bucks, it, it, it just, it's crazy. I've got enough to last me uh, for many thousand jigs. Uh, but once again, so here we go. I've got a real nice fine up here. And I like that tip. And I'm going to save that tip for, uh, for uh, some other project for making a hackle tail jig in the minnow, kind of minnow style. So I'm, I'm cutting this off. But you'll see him again. He's going to come back on a different jig. All right, once again, I don't need any of this fluffy stuff. We'll talk about using 
some of this scrap stuff on another video. But So I'm going to save that. Now, this size jig, you know, we get down in here, we're talking really, 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 really big, long, big, long fibers. So I kind of, I think I'm going to stop this project right in there. Now, see, when you see how webby this gets in here, these are, this is fine. This is going to look good in the water and all that. It gets really soft, uh, but it, but those are so long compared, you know, they're almost as long as the body, okay? And I don't want them quite that long, so I'm going to just take the piece that I don't want, okay? So we had a, yeah, we can't tie these a mile a minute because we, we have to do a little surgery on our feather to maximize our usage of the feather. And now it doesn't matter which end you tie in because the feather is basically even. And when you tie in from the, the non-point end, a little hack that a lot of guys do is they come down here and they'll bend that feather. They'll bend it like that. And what that does is gives you, and then you bend it over the top, see, like this. And that gives you double holding power in there, okay? That feather ain't going nowhere, baby. Ain't going nowhere. Okay, so now we're going to come down in here and we're going to put in a funky, cool uh, nylon uh, chartreuse, okay? And uh, that'll go with that, that grasshopper green uh, and blue. Okay, and I don't know, it's winter time, guys. I'm, I'm tying a lot of blue today, guys and girls and girls and guys and gals and people. People of all all uh, all kinds, shapes, sizes, uh, passions, and uh, principles, we're uh, feeling a little blue, feeling a little winter blues there. I'm a tug, I'm tugging, I'm tugging. I got to tie blue in the winter time. It's great. You know, water's more clear. It's cold. Fish seem like they're almost transparent sometimes. These little bait fish, and apparently blue is just a, a light wave they give off. Uh, because of the the angle of the sun, I don't know what it is about blue in winter time. I mean, blue works other times of year, but it was the guys taking me out in the winter time to fish that got me going on the blue. Okay, so we got this hackle, and we're gonna be able to just take it around just a couple times here. Gonna take it around like that. Gonna take it around like that. And we're gonna be able to get one more half wrap out of it. I'll take it around here. Nope, we're not. We're just going to take it like that. And we'll take it and we got it trapped. Right there, right there, right there. Okay. And now I'm going to come in with my little scissors and be careful not to cut all this hackle off. Okay. And look at that. Now, now that's just two wines on there. And look at how killer that looks. The only thing you got to use a big long, you know, if you want to use a big long one, have tons and tons of legs sticking off and all kinds. But look at that. Two wines on a, you know, two, two inch piece of hackle. And you've got tons of legs. You've got tons of action coming off of there. You've got a great looking bug. Okay. Great looking bug. And I'm just going to finish it off here. Love it when I feel that go down and seat down in there. Yeah. Okay. Now remember, if you want to get some glue in, just put some glue on your your thread, wrap it in there a couple times, and do your finish. But uh, my knots are doing good, feeling good. Okay. And now, what we have, we have a beautiful bugger jig. Okay. And, you know, a, a real particular fly tire be like, oh, cut these out, cut these out, cut these out. I, I don't, you know, do it if you want to. Don't do it if you don't want to. Uh, but there it is. Crappie style mop jig with the, with the woolly bugger body on it. So there you go. All righty. We're going to go and test some of those in the tank. Thanks for watching. That's Hackle Hacks on your mop jigs. A big mop jig video for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. 
as much as I enjoyed making for you. This is Crappie Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas, saying tight lines and valentines. Peace out. Okay, mop material. Let's talk about it. We want to get microfiber yarn. That is how mop jigs are made. So let's start off with the obvious. Go to a fly shop or go online to a place that carries fly tying supplies. Uh, Nimrods, um, Barlow's, Jan's Netcraft, Lureparts.com. Um, there's all kinds of places to get microfiber yarn. Now this was two and a half foot or two and a half yard packages. I got these between two and a half, three dollars each. Um, makes it between one and two dollars for your microphone. That's a little expensive, but if you're just starting out and you just want to try it and you're not sure that tying mop jigs is for you, this is a good way to get small packages and uh, give it a try. Now, let's say you do use it and you fall in love and you're like, oh, I want to get more colors and I don't have a whole lot of money. Well, there's other places to get it, and one of my favorites is your uh, craft and hobby store. And um, one time I was on my way to the movies with my grown up baby daughter, and we cut through a Joann's on our way through the mall and looked around a little bit. And I found this microfiber baby blanket yarn in the um, $5 bin. And uh, what a great find! So, this is 190 yards of microfiber yarn for me to make uh, uh, mop jigs with in this funky, cool yellow green, uh, spring green color. Um, five bucks for all this so I can make a billion jigs out of this and what a great find it was okay so we got two places you can go and get your fly, uh, mop chenille from the fly supply uh, fly tying supply place either online or, or sticks and bricks or you can always check out the hobby shop and hobby cho shops are great places to check for other weird ideas for materials and things you can make uh, fishing lures and jigs out of now when I go to the grocery store the superstore, you know, like a Walmart or what have you, or a uh, um, DG, Dollar General, or a Dollar Tree, or a Bottom Dollar, or any of these places, I'm going to look in housewares, and I'm going to look in the automotive section, okay? Because in housewares, of course, they're called mop jigs because they originally come off a mop, and I've got this great big beautiful box full of mops that I got from different places and in different ways and um, one of the things you know first things you're gonna go uh, you get into housewares and look I found this groovy sponge okay this was about six bucks and it has uh, let me set this down here out of, out of the way whoops uh, it doesn't you know uh, this a little more on the pricey side but still gives me dozens and dozens and dozens of this really beautiful icy blue and if you notice the that we have uh, not only a, the, this kind of pointed it's a little different shape but we have two sizes on here so we got these bigger ones like this and then we've got some nice little ones on here so you look at that that's gonna make a really fun attractive tail and you know you can still use the sponge once you've cut it all off of there and uh, um, it's going to absorb water fast because it's a sponge. This is what it's made to do. It's made to absorb water quickly. It's also made to hold up in the water and be very durable. So there we go with that one. Now, okay, so I'm checking the housewares and I find a sponge, but, you know, maybe I'll go over to the automotive and I got this at a Dollar General in the, in the uh, I couldn't find anything in the housewares, but in the automotive, they've got these wash mitts. And these things are, look at all the material on there look at that you know I've made a bunch of jigs I've hardly cut anything off of here um, and this is this shape this kind of uh, uh, long cylinder kind of a shape this one they're all the same size all really evenly matched so uh, that can be a bonus or, or maybe or maybe not but anyway this one was I think five bucks right in there for all these uh, but it gets better it gets better I mean you can go to the straight auto parts store and of course they're gonna look at this double-sided wash mitt I got here um, but yeah I like this pearl I love this gray silver and it's two-sided so it's got just you know tons this was seven bucks but look at the yield on that thing look at the yield on that thing and it's gonna be a little better fiber once again this is kind of the more pointed kind of more rabbit's foot type uh, uh, but these look good and they catch real well uh, good stuff uh, there um, also, you know, I get into my wife, she goes into Dollar Tree, you know, and she comes out 
with these, these are one sided, but they're only a buck a piece. All right. And I got this killer, killer blue, and I got this super killer, uh, straight up chartreuse. Okay. That's about as true as chartreuse as you're going to find. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. And you can see I use that one a lot. I've tied, I don't know how many jigs, you know, and it looks like maybe I've used a lot, but look at how much I got left to go. And I got all this for a buck. Two bucks. Now, you're going to say, well, what about durability? Yeah, these are not the most durable mops. This is a dollar. All right, come on. But, um, you know, you're still going to catch 10, 15 fish off and maybe more before they... I've only had really only had two of them come apart out of the dozens of jigs I've, I've tied. So, you know, you might get an occasional clinker on the on these, these uh, cheaper mops, uh, but the overall savings, they're, they're well worth it. And they, you know, they can last for, for, for many, 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 many fish. Um, okay, and then... Uh, you know, here's another one I got in a, in a kind of a black and I got this in the automotive section of Walmart for six bucks and, uh, uh, really, really fun color, uh, essential color that everybody should have, uh, got on Amazon and, uh, uh, looked around because I wanted just more colors and I was able to find a couple of two sided, the kind of the cheaper kind, like I got at Dollar General. But these are two-sided, so they've got, and these were only uh, two, I think it was five bucks for, for both of these. So two fifty dollars each. Uh, it was all in a big, big shipment of other stuff, so I didn't have to, got the postage for free. So I got, you know, wonderful colors here, and again, in the, in the cylinder shape, uh, super cheap off Amazon. And once again, just look for wash mitts, and there's all kinds of suppliers selling cheap wash mitts there. Now, I went, I can't remember whether it's Target.com or Amazon.com, but you can get microfiber bath mats and this bath mat or maybe off walmart.com i don't know where i got this but you once again your housewares look at this i got this bath mat and this is that color that we all find you know unpleasant but uh because it's a bloody uh chicken liver kind of road rash i just skinned the heck out of my elbow color but it's undisputably an awesome color and i love this mat because uh it had not only these big big uh, fibers in it, big uh, uh, nodules or whatever you want to call these things. But it, then it had the skinny ones too, like this. So now I've got, you know, a double double weapon here. I can make my eighth ounce and quarter ounce uh, bigger jigs like this. And then if I want to make my 16th and 32nd, uh, I've got a material here that'll downsize into that. And, uh, but road rash and oh my goodness. Now this was 15 bucks and, uh, you know, once again, I ordered it with a bunch of other stuff, so I was patient and waited until I had a full uh, free shipping card before I, I placed my order. So I got this 15 bucks. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all that material. I mean, you're going to be cutting road rash jigs and making road rash jigs until uh, your kid graduates with that. You know, it, it's going to be... Uh, it, it's 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 awesome. So, all righty. So those are the some sources for microfiber mops, and uh, whether you get them here or get them there, spend a little, spend a little more. It's all good. That's exactly what you want. Microfiber mops. Look in housewares, bath mats. Look for wash mitts in the automotive section. Look for sponges and mops in the actual mop session of the household cleaning uh, section. Uh, of course, the hobby shop. Look for that baby blanket. Uh, microfiber uh, yarn because you can also use that for chenille too on bigger jigs and last but not least walk in and say hi to the guy that owns the local fly shop give him some support buy a pack or two of uh, microfiber uh, mop chenille uh, make their day and get going on a color maybe that you don't have or can't find in some of these other more unusual uh, sources of mops alrighty that's it this is crappie hippie your tree hugging redneck from eastern Kansas saying tight lines and valentines mop it up Thank uh you. -huh.